Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Janma Dasya Yadani Vyad Vitaratascha Tesu Vityaswara Janma Vyasya Yadam Vyad Vitaratascha Tesu Vityaswara Tene Brahma Hidaya Adikavaye Muyantiyat Surayaha Tejo Vari Medam Yatabini Mayo Yatra Trisargo Misha Tejo Vari Medam Yatabini Mayo Yatra Trisargo Misha Damna Svena Sada Nirasta Kuhakam Satyam Param Dimahi Damna Svena Sada Nirasta Kuhakam Satyam Param Dimahi Oh my Lord Sri Krishna Son of Vasudeva Oh my Lord Sri Krishna Son of Vasudeva O all-pervading personality of Godhead, o all -pervading personality of, Godhead. Of, my respectful unto you. of my respectful obeisances unto you, I meditate upon Lord Sri Krishna because he is the absolute truth. I meditate upon Lord Sri Krishna because he is the absolute truth. And the primeval cause of all causes. And the primeval cause of all causes. Of the creation, sustenance, and destruction of the manifested universes. Of the creation, sustenance, and destruction of manifested universes. He is directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations. He is directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations. And he is independent because there's no other cause beyond him. And he is independent because there's no other cause. It's he only who first departed the Vedic knowledge into the heart of Brahmaji. It is he only who first departed the Vedic knowledge into the heart of Brahmaji. The original living being. The original living being. By him, even the great sages and demigods are placed into illusion. As one is bewildered by the illusory representations, as one is bewildered by the illusory representations of water seen on fire or land seen on water, of water seen on fire, land seen on water. Only because of him do the material universes. Only because of him do the material universes. Temporarily manifested by the reaction of the modes of nature. Temporarily manifested by the reaction of the three modes of nature. Appear factual, although they are unreal. Appear factual, although they are unreal. I therefore meditate upon him, Lord Sri Krishna. I therefore meditate upon him, Lord Krishna. Who is eternally existent in the transcendental abode. Who is eternally existent in the transcendental abode. Which is forever free from the illusory representations of the material world. Which is forever free from illusory representations of the material world. I meditate upon him, for he is the absolute truth. I meditate upon him, for he is the absolute truth. Dharma Pujita Kaitra Vutra. Dharma Pujita Kaitra Vutra. Paramo Nyamatsunam Satam. Paramo Nyamatsunam Satam. Vedyam Vastava Matra Vastu. Vedyam Vastava Matra Vastu. Shivadam Tapa Trayon Mulanam. Shivadam Tapa Trayon Mulanam. Shimad Bhagavate Mahamuni Krite. Shimad Bhagavate Mahamuni Krite. Kimba Purer Ishwaraha. Kimba Purer Ishwaraha. Sadyur Hidi Aburudhyate Tra. Sadyur Hidi Aburudhyate Tra. Kriti Bihi Susu Subhistakshana. Kriti Bihi Susu Subhistakshana. Completely rejecting all religious activities which are materially motivated. Completely rejecting all religious activities which are materially motivated. This Bhagavata Purana propounds the highest truth. This Bhagavata Purana propounds the highest truth. Which is understandable by those devotees who are fully pure in heart. Which is understandable by those devotees who are fully pure in heart. The highest truth is reality distinguished from illusion for the welfare of all. Such truth uproots the threefold miseries. This beautiful Bhagavatam compiled by the great sage Vyasadeva in his maturity is sufficient in itself for God realization. What is the need of any other scripture? As soon as one attentively and submissively hears the message of Bhagavatam, as soon as one attentively and submissively hears the message of Bhagavatam, by this culture of knowledge, by this culture of knowledge, the Supreme Lord is established within his heart. The Supreme Lord is established within his heart. Nigama kapatur galitam falam. Nigama kapatur galitam falam. Sukumakad amrita dravya sangitam. Sukumakad amrita dravya sangitam. Pibata Bhagavatam rasam alayam. Muhur aho rasika buvi bhavu kaha. Oh, expert and thoughtful man. Relish Shimad Bhagavatam. The mature fruit of the desire to read Vedic literatures. It emanated from the lips of Shisukadev Goswami. 
Therefore, this fruit has become even more tasteful. Although its nectarian juice was already relishable for all. Shinvatam Swatkata Krishna. Punya Shravana Kirtana. Vidyantaksto Bhadrani. We do not satam. To hear about Krishna from Vedic literatures. Or to hear from him directly through the Bhagavad Gita. Is is in itself righteous activity. It is in itself righteous. And for one who hears about Krishna, and for one who hears about Lord Krishna, who is dwelling in everyone's heart, Lord Krishna is dwelling within his own heart, acts as a best wishing friend, acts as the best wishing friend, and purifies the devotee, and purifies the devotee, who constantly engages in hearing of him. Who constantly engages in hearing of him. It's not stop, Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Uttama Sloke Bhaktir Bhavati Naistaki In this way, a devotee naturally develops his dormant transcendental knowledge. A naturally dormant transcendental As he hears more about Krishna from the Bhagavatam and from the devotees. He becomes fixed in the devotional service of the Lord. He becomes fixed in his devotional service to the Lord. Tadarajas tamo bhavo. Tadarajas tamo bhavo. Kamalo bhadayas che. Kamalo bhadayas che. Chita itarin avidam. Chita itarin avidam. Sitvam sattve prasiddhati. Sitvam sattve prasiddhati. By development of devotional service. By development of devotional service. One becomes freed from the modes of passion and ignorance. And thus material lusts and avarice are diminished. Evam prasana manaso Bhagavat Bhakti Yogataha Bhagavat Tattva Vigyanam Mukta Sangasya Jayate When these impurities are wiped away when these impurities are wiped away the candidate remains steady in his position of pure goodness. The candidate remains steady in his position of pure goodness. Becomes enlivened by devotional service. Becomes enlivened by devotional service. And understands the science of God perfectly. And understands the science of God perfectly. Vidyate hridaya grantis. Vidyate hridaya grantis. Chidyante sarvasamsaya. Chidyante sarvasamsaya. Shiyanta chashikarmani. Krista Evat Manishwari. Thus, Bhakti Yoga serves the hard knot of material affection. Thus, Bhakti Yoga serves the hard knot of material affection. And enables one to come to the stage of a samsayam samagram. And enables to come one to the stage of samasya samsayam. A samsayam samagram. A samsayam samagram. Understanding of the supreme absolute truth personality of Godhead. The supreme absolute truth. Understanding the supreme truth. Absolute, absolute truth, personality of God. Understanding the absolute S truth. The supreme absolute truth, personality of Godhead. Understanding the supreme truth. The supreme absolute truth, personality of Godhead. <laughs> the supreme absolute truth, personality of Godhead. Shrimad Bhagavatam, Canto 1, Chapter 14, verse number 5. Nibitani Adyaristani. Nibitani Adyaristani. Kale Twanugate Rinam. Kale Twanugate Rinam. Lobad Yadharma Prakritim. Just vo va cha nu jam ripa. Just vo va cha nu jam ripa. Translation by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. In course of time, it came to pass that people in general became accustomed to greed, anger, pride, etc. Maharaj Yudhisthira, observing all these omens, spoke to his younger brother. 
purport by Srila Prabhupada. Such a pious king as Maharaj Yudhisthira at once became perturbed when there were such inhuman symptoms as greed, anger, irreligiosity, and hypocrisy rampant in society. It appears from this statement that all these symptoms of degraded society were unknown to the people of the time, and it was astonishing for them to have experienced them with the advent of the Kali Yuga or age of quarrel that we are living in right now. So, by practicing Krishna consciousness and also Daivi Varna Ashram system of organization of Varnas and Ashramas <clears throat> to protect people from themselves and protect them from um, misconceptions and unholy people. That's, that's why the Varna Ashram system is very useful for doing that. When you say protect people from themselves, we all have this uh, desire for sense gratification. That's why we came to this material world. Krishna Bhuliya Jeev, Bhogavan Chakari. Pasate, Pasate Maya, Bhogavan uh, Chakari, Dare. Yeah, Pasate Maya Chakari, Dare. Thank you. So, uh, when we forget Krishna due to enviousness and desire sense gratification, we are trapped by Maya in this material world. And we begin the cycle of birth and death in different bodies and basically suffering. So, the whole Varnasham system is to remember Krishna to always and to engage and by, and by engaging in devotional service it's easy to remember Krishna that's why as we learned yesterday devotional service is the uh, the way to solve all problems this is explained in 6th chapter 30th verse where it says that Prabhupada says, let me see what that is. Yumam Pashyati Sarvat Sarvatra Sarvam Chamai Pashyati Tashiham na Pranasyati Sachame na Pranasyati Tashiham na Pranasyami Sachame na Pranasyati For one who sees me everywhere and who sees everything in me I am never lost, nor is he ever lost to me. And the purport prophet says, a person in Krishna consciousness certainly sees Lord Krishna everywhere, and he sees everything in Krishna. Such a person may appear to see all separate manifestations of material nature, but in each and every instance he is conscious of Krishna, knowing that everything is a manifestation of Krishna's energy. Nothing can exist without Krishna, and Krishna is the Lord of everything. This is the basic principle of Krishna consciousness. So nothing can exist without Krishna, and Krishna is the Lord of everything. This is what we learn by following the property, the Daiva Varnashram system. Therefore, we become Krishna conscious all the time. Nothing can exist without Krishna, and and uh, everything is a manifestation of Krishna's energy. Mm -hmm. Okay, so then Prabhupada says, Krishna consciousness is a development of love of Krishna, a position transcendental even to material liberation. At this stage of Krishna consciousness, beyond self-realization, the devotee becomes one with Krishna in the sense that Krishna becomes everything for the devotee, and the devotee becomes full in loving Krishna. An intimate relationship between the Lord and the devotee then exists, and the Lord, uh, and, 
in that stage, the living entity can never be annihilated, nor is the personality of Godhead ever out of sight of the devotee. To merge in Krishna is spiritual annihilation. A devotee takes no such risk. It is stated in Brahma Samhita, Pramanjana Charita Bhakti Vilochane Na Santak Sadeva Hirdaye Savilola Kayanti Yam Sam Sundara Machintya Gunaswa Rupam Govinda Madhi Purisam Tamaham Bajami. I worship the primeval Lord Govinda, who is always seen by the devotee whose eyes are anointed with the pulp of love. He is seen in his eternal form of Shamsundara, situated within the heart of the devotee. At this stage, Lord Krishna never disappears from the sight of the devotee, nor does the devotee ever lose sight of the Lord. In the case of a yogi who sees the Lord as Paramatma within the heart, the same applies. Such is such a yogi turns into a pure devotee and cannot bear to live for a moment without seeing the Lord within himself. Okay, so nothing can exist without Krishna, and Krishna is the Lord of everything. That is the, as we say here, uh, the basic principle of Krishna consciousness. So, Maharaj Yudhisthira, began to see these inhuman sim symptoms. What are the inhuman symptoms? Greed, anger, irreligiosity, and hypocrisy rampant in society. <clears throat> so these are the symptoms of a degraded society. And it was unknown at that time. But then it creeped in because of the disappearance of Krishna in the beginning of Kali Yuga, or the age of quarrel. Everyone is quarreling in this age. And we see that today, even though 5,000 years later, it's just getting worse. It's not getting any better. Okay, next verse, text six. Yudhisthira uvacha sampresito dwarakayam Jisnur Bandu Dridikshaya Gyatum Chapunya Slokasya Krishna Syacha Vichestitam Translation Maharaj Yudhisthira said to his younger brother Bhima Sena, I sent Arjuna to Dwarka to meet his friends and to learn from the personality of God at Krishna of his program of work. Text seven. Gata Sapta Dunamasa Gata Sapta Dunamasa Vimasena Tavanuja Vimasena Tavanuja Nayati Kashiva Hetur Nayati Kashiva Hetur Naham Vedam Anjusa Since he departed, seven months have passed, and yet he has not returned. I do not know factually how things are going there. Text 8. Api devar sinadista Sakalo yam upastita Yadat mano nagam akridam Bhagavan Ushishrikshati. Is he going to quit his earthly pastimes? As Devar Sinarada indicated, has that time already arrived? Purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. As we have discussed many times, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Lord Sri Krishna, has many plenary expansions, and each and every one of them, although equally what powerful, execute different functions. In these statements, in, in Bhagavad Gita, there are different statements by the Lord, and each of these statements is meant for different plenary portions or portions of the plenary portions. For example, Sri Krishna the Lord says in Bhagavad Gita, whenever and wherever there is a decline in religious practice, O descendant of Bharata, and a predominant rise of irreligion, at that time I descend myself. 
Bhagavad Gita 4 7. Yadi Yadi Hi Dharma Sya. To deliver the faithful, to annihilate the miscreants, and also to reestablish the principles of occupational duty, I appear in every millennium. If I should cease to work, then all humanity would be misdirected. I would also be the cause of creating unwanted population, and I would thereby destroy the peace of all sentient beings. Whatever action a great man performs, common men will follow, and whatever standards he sets by exemplary acts, all the world pursues. All the above statements by the Lord apply to different plenary portions of the Lord, namely his expanses as Sankar son, Vasudeva, Pradumna, Aniruddha, and Narayana. <clears throat> These are all he himself in different transcendental expansions. And still the Lord, as Sri Krishna, functions in different spheres of transcendental exchange with different grades of devotees. As yet, Lord Krishna, as he appears once every 24 hours of Brahma's time, or after a lapse of 8,640,000,000 solar years, in each and every universe, and all his transcendental pastimes are displayed in each and every universe in a routine spool. Spool means like a... Uh, a uh, spool of uh, of a uh, of a movie cam uh, movie camera, not camera, but a movie. Uh, in other words, they had these this this film with many many pictures on it. Each one uh, passing it quickly, you see a in, in general movement. Whereas if you look at each one separately, there's there there's still. So that's a, a rule, a spool or a reel of film that is a movie. <clears throat> in every universe, in a routine spool, but in that routine spool, the functions of the Lord, Lord Vasudeva, etc., are complex problems for the layman. There is no difference between the Lord's self and the Lord's transcendental body. The expansions execute differential activities. When the Lord, however, appears in his person as Lord Sri Krishna, his other plenary portions also join in him by his inconceivable potency called Yoga Maya. And thus, the Lord Krishna of Vrindavan is different from the Lord Krishna of Mathura or the Lord Krishna of Dwarka. The Virat Rupa of Lord Krishna is also different from him by his inconceivable potency. The Virat Rupa exhibited in the battlefield of Kurukshetra is the material conception of his form. Therefore, it should be understood that when Lord Krishna was apparently killed by the bow and arrow of the hunter, the Lord left his so-called material body in the material world. The Lord is Kaivalya, and for him, there's no difference between matter and spirit because everything is created from him. Therefore, his quitting one sort of body or accepting another body does not mean that he is like the ordinary living being. All such activities are simultaneously one and different by his inconceivable potency. When Maharaj Yudhisthira was lamenting, lamenting the possibility of his dis dis disappearance, it was just in pursuance of a custom of lamenting the disappearance of a great friend. But factually, the Lord never quits his transcendental body as is misconceived by less intelligent persons. Such less intelligent persons have been condemned by the Lord himself in Bhagavad Gita and they are known as mudas. The Lord left his body means that he left again his plenary portion in the respective dhammas or transcendental abodes as he left his virat rupa in the material world. Now, this is extremely profound purport explaining some of the most mysterious things about 
Lord Krishna or God. Very few people can make this explanation and very few people can actually understand it. As you see, even now we're somewhat perplexed by it because it is beyond our capabilities. So whenever there's something beyond our capabilities, although we see it, we hear it, we still are perplexed by it. That's why it says that the Lord is simultaneously and inconceivably one and different. Why does Lord Chaitanya say inconceivably? Because when you talk about Krishna, you're going to enter into a realm where Krishna's absolute potencies bewilder the tiny jiva. We are the tiny jivas. And because we can't emulate or, or do what the Lord is doing, and whatever he does is transcendental and, and full of potencies that we don't have, and, and beyond our capability of understanding, we get perplexed by it. However, pure devotees understand the absolute powers of the Lord and not, and therefore, because they're not envious of the Lord, they're not perplexed either. But Parlat Maharaj was not perplexed when he saw Nishringa Dev. But even Lakshmi Devi was somewhat perplexed. And Lord Brahma was per perplexed. So, when I say perplexed, they're, they were not that they were confused. They know they knew it was the Lord, but it was such an amazing form that they were afraid to approach Him in that form. But Prahlad Maharaj wasn't. So, unless we accept that the Lord has absolute and in, in, infinite potencies, we remain an atheist, and we are full of doubts. And that's because of the, of the limits of hum, human understanding, which is even more limited by the, a material body covering our soul, and also the fact that we still may have some uh, latent enviousness of the Lord. Therefore, we refuse to accept that he has unlimited uh, uh, powers. And therefore, when we see or hear something of his unlimited powers, like what we just read, we think it's fantasy, it's not true, it's made up, it's uh, something that's uh, manufactured by some clever person. And, and then we make theories like, well, Krishna was, you know, a, uh, an insignificant pastoral god of the Aryans, but when the Aryans invaded North India, and pushed the Dravidians to South India, they brought with them this pastoral god, and somehow or other he became prominent. <laughs> That's their explanation of how Krishna came to India. It was, the whole thing is made up, it's false, there's not one iota of truth, but yet, they, they because they're PhDs, they, people who, have been bewildered by their educational system that they brought with them to India and their timelines based on the Bible. The world started 5,000 years ago, all that nonsense. They uh, begin to believe these, these false explanations. But here we see today the real explanation. And, and we should carefully read this uh, because... This is explaining the first uh, chapter of Yuha expansion of the Lord. And there's two of them. One is for the spiritual world and one is for the material world. So this is explaining the first and second, in a sense, chapter of Yuha's of the Lord. And these are the plenary expansions. Uh, actually, there is a difference, okay. The, the chapter of Yuha expansions in the spiritual world are plenary expansions. And some of the uh, Chatur Vyuha expansions, second Chatur Vyuha expansions, or one of them at least. Okay, anyway, I'm going to take that back. I don't want to speculate. But the uh, uh, Vishnu expansions in the material world, uh, if I'm not mistaken, are considered partial 
uh, plenary expansions of the Lord. That is something we're gonna, I'm going to look up and be sure of. And you can also look it up and, and uh, inform me if that's correct or incorrect. I'm not absolutely sure about that. Uh, okay, so anyway, uh, when we're talking about the Chaturvyuha, there's two of them, the first and the second, and they are Sankarsan, Vasudeva, Pradum, Naniruddha, and Narayana. Prabhupada said, these are all he himself in different transcendental expansions, and still the Lord, as Sri Krishna functions in a different sphere of transcendental exchange with different grades of devotees. And, he, and yet the Lord, as he is, appears once every 24 hours of Brahma's time or after a lapse of 8 trillion 640 million solar years. And we should figure out what a solar year is. It doesn't mean it's the same as our years, or it may be. It's another question that we can look into. In each and every universe, and all his transcendental pastimes are displayed in, uh, are displayed in each and every universe in a routine spool. That means uh, one, uh, one event after another. But in that routine spool, the functions of Lord Krishna, Lord Vasudeva, etc., are complex problems for the layman. There's no difference between the Lord's self and the Lord's transcendental body. The expansions execute differential activities, meaning basically different activities. When the Lord, however, appears in his person as Lord Sri Krishna, his other plenary portions also join in him by his inconceivable potency called Yoga Maya. And thus, what you notice the word inconceivable potency, Yoga Maya. And thus the Lord Krishna of Vrindavan is different from the Lord Krishna of Mathura or the Lord Krishna of Dwarka. Okay, now what does this mean, different? Because we're saying also that he's the same person. His activities are different. That's why he uses the word differential activities. His activities are different. So uh, it appears that he's different. So it says, and thus the Lord Krishna of Vrindavan is different from the Lord Krishna of Mathura or the Lord Krishna of Dwarka. The Virat Rupa of Lord Krishna is also different from him by his inconceivable potency. Uh, this is why Prabhupada says, 18th chapter, 66 words. He says, One should be attracted by the beautiful vision of Krishna. His name is Krishna because he is all attractive. One who becomes attracted by the beautiful, all-powerful, omnipotent vision of Krishna is fortunate. There are different kinds of transcendentalists. Some of them are attached to the impersonal Brahman vision. Some of them are attracted by the super soul feature, etc. But one who is attracted to the personal feature of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, and above all, one is attracted by the Supreme Personality of Godhead as Krishna himself is the most perfect transcendentalist. In other words, devotional service to Krishna in full, Krishna, in full consciousness is the most confidential part of knowledge, and this is the essence of the whole Bhagavad Gita. So, so the point is uh, that I wanted to make is when Prabhupada says, one is attracted by the Supreme Personality of Godhead as Krishna himself. Now, all these expansions of the Chaturvyuha are Krishna. They're absolute or plenary expansions. But his original form as Sham Sundar, holding the flute and the tribunga, the three uh, bending form, is that from which everything else emanates. All the other forms come. So when we come to the point where we're not even interested in the uh, Narayana forms of the Lord. There's millions of Narayana forms, and they come from Narayana, original Narayana comes from the Chaturvyuha, and the Chaturvyuha 
comes from Balaram, and Balaram comes from Krishna. So therefore, if we're attached to Krishna's original transcendental form, then uh, it is the most. Uh, then one becomes the most perfect transcendentalist. In other words, devotional service to Krishna is the full. Con uh, I'm sorry, devotional service. In other words, devotional service to Krishna in the full con in full consciousness is the most confidential part of knowledge, and this is the essence of the whole Bhagavad Gita. Well, Krishna is appearing in his original form to Arjuna. So, uh, therefore, uh, we also see that the gopis, when they were looking for Krishna, Krishna appeared in front of them as Narayana, and they gave their obeisances to Narayana, but they were not really interested in seeing Narayana. They became impatient and and they continued to look for Krishna in his original form. So this is a, this is very difficult to understand. Uh, so it says there's no difference between the Lord's self and the transcendental and the Lord's transcendental body. The expansions execute differential activities. So that's the key right there. When the Lord, however, appears in his person as Lord Sri Krishna, his other plenary portions are also also join in him by his inconceivable potency called Yoga Maya, and thus the Lord Krishna of Vrindavan is different from the Lord Krishna of Mathura or the Lord Krishna of Dwarka. The Virat Rupa of Lord Krishna is also different from him by his inconceivable potency. The Virat Rupa exhibited on the battlefield of Kurukshetra is the material conception of his form. So this is all, uh, let's say, causes complexity even as we're reading it now because it's something that's incomprehensible. Uh, however, if we just accept it as Prabhupada is, is explaining it, then we're not bewildered. But if we try to rationalize this, we'll get bewildered and we'll ask a million questions and never seem to be satisfied by the answers other than the fact that it is inconceivable. That's the whole point. Simultaneously and inconceivably one and different. Right. So although you might say, well, wait a minute, how can he be different in Vrindavan and Mathura or Dwarka? Well, what's different is the activities. It's the same person, but the activities are different. So it appears different. And... The Virat Rupa is a material body that Krishna assumes, and that's why everything is situated within Krishna, within that Virat Rupa form in the material world. But then he can leave that body. It's not an eternal form. It's only present in the material world. Okay, we'll stop right there. I'm sure there are a thousand questions. <laughs> I don't think I can answer <laughs> most of them. But uh, are there any questions? So we have to look up the point is uh, are, are the Vishnu expansions in the material world plenary expansions or partial plenary expansions? That should be our research for tomorrow. And what is the second point? Okay, and the, the second point is what does it mean that Lord Krishna of Vrindavan is different from the Lord Krishna of Mathura or the Lord Krishna of Dwarka. And that the Virat Rupa of Lord Krishna is also different from him by his inconceivable potency. Okay. All glories to Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai.